to another commentary done by Diggity. I might be a little bit flustered on this one. Just because... Okay. I'm going to call these guys out a little bit. So we got Obi-Wan starting the upper right-hand corner as the... Oh, ugly color. Yellow as well. Mustard, yellow, Terran. This is Arthur Fleck, a.k.a. Obi-Wan, a.k.a. Uh, a bunch of other names in this. I'm just going to stick with Obi-Wan. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Pepper, a.k.a. Keen. So this is going to be Keen as the purple Zerg in the bottom left-hand corner. And if I mess that up as things progress, this entire grouping, actually, I think this is the group of death as far as the round of 32 is concerned. But uh, BSL Season 13, what group is this? I think this is Group C, by the way. Or Group D? Group D. Overlord making its way to the upper left-hand corner. This is on Revolver once again. Anyway, so it's... I don't know. This is a rough group. So Exit, last season Chobo League champion. I am not surprised that he's made it up into Hasu League. Uh, you've got Obi-Wan, who I have not seen play before. But I think he's a pretty decent player. I, he's a name that I recognize. You've got Sheep in this group as well. And I know he's a decent player, and I know Keen is solid all the way around. So you have a lot of solid players. Any any of these guys could easily make it to the round of 16 and honestly to the round of 8. You've got Exit in that bracket as well. So point being, this is a, this is a strong group, I feel like. Looks like we've already seen that front door seal in that upper right-hand corner. Looks like we're going to see a 12 hatch from Keen. We'll see how he plays. The one, I feel like this is the one matchup that has remained, the meta shifted dramatically for TVP. I feel like it shifted dramatically uh, in the off time for uh, PVZ as well. This feels like the one matchup where it's remained somewhat constant. We'll have to see. Where nothing, there hasn't been a big shift that I've noticed in the meta. There's been the crazy Zerg stuff that's been happening in the background. For whatever reason, that really hasn't been taking off. Uh, in the Terran crowd, that or in the, uh, in the in this foreign Zerg crowd, I think that might be because of lag, because you have to rely so heavily on Mutalis Micro, and that lag is not. It's actually interesting. I feel like that's a detriment to the foreigner community as well, where you, can't, you need two sets of build, right? You have the set of the build, you, you have the build that you can execute really, really well in low latency conditions, and then you have to have your second build that you need to worry about if you're on ladder and you're dealing with uh, more because lag. Like Mutalis is so important; it is a key unit in every matchup for Zerg. And so if you can't rely on your Mutalis Micro because the lag is somewhat difficult, that means you're going to have to deal with potentially more creative builds down the line. So I'm actually wondering how much that's a factor um, in a lot of play. We already see an Extractor down Hatchery. It looks like Obi-Wan going to get the Scout. He's going to see that Extractor mining. Looks like I feel like that Extractor maybe a little bit late. We're already seeing two Hatch play initially. No drones yet at that natural expansion in Obi-Wan. Potentially going to get a kill. Gets a drone kill. That's huge. So not only does he get the scout, not only does he see the lair, not only does he see the gas timing, but he also gets a drone kill. Potentially gets a second, and he's able to disrupt a decent amount of mining. Only five health left. Single drone. Is that drone going to get a revenge kill? No, the drone doesn't get a revenge kill. Two Zerglings going to chase that SCV out. Three Marines already staging out towards that natural expansion. And Obi-Wan looks like he opted for a factory opening. It is possible that we're going to see a 1-1-1 here. Let's see if Keen will scout this, first of all, because the Overlord made its way to the upper. With all of that shenanigan, he is relying on his Zergling to get the scouting information, and these Marines are going to go ahead and blockade those Zerglings out. So he's not going to be aware that he's going up against a some style of mech opener, which could be very, very detrimental to him, because if you don't have Creek Colonies or other things, looks like he's going to try to run. This is clever from Keen. He's going to go ahead. He's like, okay, you're blocking that front. I'm going to go ahead and try to move my way to the north. Obi-Wan already on top of it, though, moved those marines to the left hand corner also putting down a preventative bunker i feel like this bunker is somewhat unnecessary but the zergling is still able to slip through to the north this is a huge scout by the way so moving in sees the vultures so now he knows that he's going up against a mech opener and seeing the two vultures and also seeing that factory morphing in he knows that he needs to get a sunken colony he also might want to plop down some form of sim city we do have that spire on the way obi-wan needs to get yeah he's got that armory already halfway down don't see a starport yet. Oftentimes you'll see a starport in combination with this just because you need it to have a little bit of anti-air. Even having the wraith out in the front where the where the mutalists have to deal with that wraith can be helpful. The vultures moving up. This is kind of an interesting position where they might just be able to run by and they are going for the run by. The drone's pulling off the line. 
And actually, this was an interesting position from Keen. He actually, I think, preemptively moved this drone to the right to create a bit of... I think maybe he was thinking about dropping it for... Um, yeah, hatchery for some city, but heads up play, moving that drone along to go ahead and blockade. So not a lot happening there with... So a little bit of mining disruption, pulling those drones off, but weren't able to get much of a kill. And actually, I think favorably, actually ended up in Keen's favor overall. Second gas being grabbed, which is necessary in these mech builds. We see Charon booster upgrade. First Goliath being produced. I still am waiting for the engineering bay because the Spire has just finished. The Mutalisks are going to be on the way and a single Goliath and even three Goliaths, I don't think are going to cut it because this is a lot of territory to cover. To defend, there's the engineering bay, about halfway finished through the natural expansion. Looks like armor one's also being upgraded for Keen, so he's going to try to rely on this into the mid game. Hatchery being plopped down at the nine o'clock location. And actually, that's a big win, sticking that past the vulture, because oftentimes it can be trouble just getting a drone by to go ahead and get that third base up. But Keen able to sneak that past. The Mutalus maybe can sneak through and deal with that vulture. I'd actually like to see it careen just to the natural expansion, see what damage you can get done. Because here's the thing, until you get sufficient amount of Goliaths and some turrets in place, this is a very tender time for Terran to try to defend against this level of play. So engineering bay up, still no turrets. And the Mutalus being produced, there's that first turret plopping down. It looks like it is going to be there in sufficient time. First Mutalus making its way to the north. A little bit of a delay as far as the Mutalus production. I like saying that tender time. Tender time. I do, I do want to give kudos to Keen on this regard. He defended a lot of that early game just on two Zerglings and a single Sultan Colony. The Mutalist is going to go ahead and scout forward. Interesting. So rather than going for harassment, he's just checking the turret placement to the north, seeing if there's turrets to the north. So it looks like what Obi-Wan's going to do is he's going to have the amount of Goliaths. He's just going to try to keep them towards the main and rely on turrets to engage the Mutalist so that he can re-engage at that natural expansion. Now it's a bit of a race. Oftentimes we will see Zerg, and is, he, is Keen just going to try to do it through Mutalist production with some Zerglings underneath, or is he going to lop back to the Hybalus play. It looks like he is getting a creep colony at that 9 o'clock location just in case additional vultures sneak through. Obi-Wan is just pure, building pure Goliaths at this stage, also a siege tank. He does have level 1 armor being upgraded as well. So this is kind of the race against time between the Zerg and the Terran. One advantage to the Mutalisk army is it forces Terran to play more defensively for a longer period because when you have those bulk Goliaths moving out, they're very, very slow. They do a lot of damage to Mulus very, very rapidly, but they're very, very slow. They're very, very cumbersome. They're, they have similar AI to Dragoons where they're just not that intelligent. Uh, so what you can do is, is you can kind of force your opponent to stay back, stay more defensive while you get a larger army fielded. However... If you lose those Mutalisks, if you don't have enough bulk to just punch through the really heavy hitting mech forces, oftentimes you can just lose the game outright. Right now, I think Keen is in a pretty good position. He's got these four hatcheries. He's sitting at about 30 drones, continuing to produce these Mutalisks. He will want... I feel like these Mutalisks end up being more effective when there's Zerglings and things underneath. Critically mining that third gas already. He has two something colonies at that 9 o'clock location. Single SCV... Actually, several SCVs kind of scouting out, making sure that Trying to find, I think, where the third is located, uh, potentially. Or to see if Keen has gone for more of a, an aggressive expansion strategy. Science facility going down to get those additional upgrades. It looks like those level one weapons is online. No movement towards additional weapons upgrades. We do have that control tower, and this is kind of danger town for Keen as far as this build. Because it looks like Obi-Wan is thinking about going ahead and getting Irradiate. And so Keen, with those Mutalists, before Radiate hits, he is going to need to dive in, take care of those Mutalists, and swap to some other point of tech. Otherwise, with the Radiates in play, and those Mutalists bunched against those Goliaths, that could be the difference. So, so a little bit of a slower mech push, if that is the case. Oof, that's a scary army. A little bit of a, a slower push, if that is the case, but if that Irradiate is in play, it could be absolutely devastating. Which is, I think, oftentimes why Zerg often will, at times, push back to Mutalisk. But this is a lot of Mutalisks. We already got, looks like, nearly two full control groups. And growing for Keen. He's doing a pretty good job macroing up. And I feel like this is kind of like one of those uh, pressure build explosive style games. Where both players 
It's like the pressure builds, the pressure builds, the pressure builds. Both players create their large attack forces, and then it just explodes in one glorious battle to decide the match. Second army planning down for Obi-Wan. One thing for Obi-Wan on his side of this match is if he doesn't get something accomplished with this army, it can be very, it's an expensive army. So he needs to make sure that it packs a punch. One advantage of this on revolver is that there is an somewhat easy to take third base with the Goliath with, that's a, a decent coverage distance. Looks like Keenan gonna go ahead and grab his five o'clock in the midst of this. The Mutalisks on patrol. Science missiles there irradiate on the way. So with that irradiate upgrade looming, this is kind of the moment where Keen might want to dive in and find that opportunity. And honestly, a great moment to do so, despite this turret being here, is, is across these ramps with the Goliath AI might be caught, may, might be creating a degree of separation. I don't see any Zergling support underneath as of yet. Looks like the Hydra Den has been plopped down. We do have an Evolution Chamber as well. There are a handful of Hydralisks being produced at this stage. Obi-Wan not making movements yet, but he is going to be moving out shortly. So now starting to move out. Irradiate is going to be in place, and this is a huge amount of Goliaths. Three siege tanks. I'm going to say, what is this? Two control groups? Control group and a half? A lot of Goliaths, and more being produced. Flooding out from that natural expansion. Comsat trying to keep an eye on that Mutalus army. Obi-Wan deciding, now it's kind of whack-a-mole as well, is where does Obi-Wan engage? Keen trying to... Looks like has a lot of the mules to the right, just looking in case there's a third. I like that Zergling to the north, just making sure that an additional base isn't being grabbed. Is Obi-Wan just going to stage up and try to take his 3 o'clock? No, he's, he's got to move with this. Oftentimes, uh, what happens here is if Terran does not get additional resources, they just end up getting starved out. Keen ahead 20 supply. But keep in mind, this is against a mech army. Level 1 armor, some Hydralisks being produced. They're starting to move out towards that 9 o'clock base. Two science vessels double irradiate with both. And this, that might be the difference, is having the irradiates to deal with bunched up Mutalists. Here's the engagement. Mutalists moving in from the right, from the south. The Hydralists coming in underneath. There's the irradiate in the groupings of the Mutalists. The Goliaths fairly fanned out. The siege tanks engaging from underneath, but it looks like Keen just has an overwhelming amount of units. And in combination with the Hydalus, before those tanks were sieged, he's just obliterating everything there. So despite losing a lot of Mutalus, he still has a decent... And unfortunately, it looks like the Goliaths ended up killing the irradiated Mutalisks. So really muting the effect there. I believe that's what happened in that fight. So Keen's still with the standing army. He's now free to go ahead. If he can just run up and punish this 12 o'clock base which I believe he has enough units to do, that should be match. So yeah, the Mutalus diving in, they're going to find that command center floating. The Goliaths responding, but honestly responding too late. The Hydralists are already there, and this is still a decent sized attack force. Another science fellows are trying to regroup, and now Obi-Wan in dire trouble. Mech armies are expensive armies. He's still sitting on four factories. He does have the, uh, look like double upgrades running. Level 1 weapons now in place, but Keen looks like he has everything in place to make this happen. He can go ahead and saturate this 5 o'clock base. He still has a huge standing army. And as long as he continually denies that third base, he will end up winning. I love, again, the Zergling camping that 3 o'clock base. The Mutalisk going ahead and grouping up around that 1 o'clock base. So Obi-Wan running low on options, and this is a huge swarm of purple in the middle of the map from Keen. And this is kind of the this is the race against time now for Obi-Wan as the mineral supply dwindling. It looks like these Goliaths have managed to sneak across while these Mulisks are out of position with the Hydralisks towards this 5 o'clock. Keen only mining gas here at the 5 o'clock location. An Overlord is going to spot this army now, and you can just see the race to go ahead and engage those Goliaths. The Goliaths might be able to wipe out this hatchery. There is a siege tank grouping. I'm not sure that siege tank's even necessary. The drone's already evacuating, I think is a smart play. But it looks like actually Keen going to be able to get the Mutalists in position, at the very least. One irradiate being dropped, and I think what Keen's been doing actually as well in these engagements is he hasn't been grouping these Mutalists with an Overlord, which is a smart play with those science vessels at location, because 
Without them bunched, you don't end up with that group damage. Brilliant play. I think that might just be straight up GG right there with that last army wiped out. Obi-Wan's trying to stage up to the 12 o'clock. But as things stand, Keen should be able to just crush this base. This is not sufficient anti-air. He's trying to get turrets up, but the Mutalists should arrive. Ah, oh, they're holding up short. Should arrive before those turrets are even in place. And this is too many Mutalists to hold back. I believe this is going to be the GG moment here. Hydralis punching in from underneath. Obi-Wan desperately trying to get those turrets up. And there's GG. Well played from Keen. Fun, fun one on Revolver to start. And this, yeah, this is going to be the group of death indeed. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.